All right, all right. Welcome back everybody to my channel. And I am about to do a review of the Dualtron Storm. You gotta pardon me, I'm really tired today. It's a long day, but I got it in uh, about a couple of days ago and I was so hyped to ride it. I was excited, I was like, oh my God. I finally got a Dualtron. As you remember in my previous videos, I was always saying how much I wanted a Dualtron, and now I got one. And now I have a Dualtron and a Weep Head, so I'm very happy. I got the two scooters that I always wanted. Uh, I had to get the I had to get the Storm because it wouldn't make any sense to get the the Thunder, being as how I have the Turbo Wheel Phaeton which I'll do a review on that as well. But I already have the Turbo Wheel Phaeton, which is similar to, well, no, actually, no, it's not similar. It's a 72 volt, excuse me, but. So both of, wow, so all three of my scooters are 72 volts, holy shit, but anyway. I'll do a review on that one at some point too, the Turbo Wheel, but for now, I wanna talk about the Storm. Now, this Storm is very nice. It's actually very fun to ride. And I mean, it is fun. Um, it's, to me, it's small. You guys got to remember, I have a Wii Pad SS. I have a Turbo Wheel Phaeton. I have, like, scooters that are, that I think are really big scooters. Those are true big scooters. And, uh, I have, and, you know, the, this Dualtron Storm to most people will be big, but to me it's like a decent size, and to me it's not that heavy. What is this like? Maybe a hundred pounds or so, or so. Probably even lighter than that. That Wee Pad SS is like a hundred and fifty pounds, dude. Like that thing is heavy. You can't. When I unboxed it, I couldn't even lift it. I couldn't even lift it out of the box. I had to cut it out of the box, even though I cut this out of the box by choice. As you see in the unboxing, I could have lifted it out. It was just getting stuck on the side. So I was like, ah, screw it. I'm not going to keep the box anyway, so I'm just cut it out. So, um, Now, this scooter, in comparison to my Wii Pad SS or my Turbo Wheel Phaeton, mm, this is, I would say, the pickup on this is a lot slower. Okay? So, it definitely to the Wii Pad SS. I was like... You know, the motor's like 10,000 watts, 200A controller, the Wii Pad SST. That shit is just insane. So, it, it can't compare to this. But for its range, like within the, I'd say the Thunder, even though it's a 60 volt, it's kind of pretty much the same, except this is going to be faster, more pickup. Um, what else? Uh, the Ultra 2, which just came out. Um, anything within this, pretty much this size range, they're, they're going to ride pretty similar. But the question is, how comfortable is it? You know, battery, range, all that kind of stuff. You know, the, the torque and all that. So, this thing, okay, so I was used to riding my WePad SS, WePad SST. Now, on the WePad SST, you get from, Z, I, I don't know the exact seconds or times or anything like that but all i know is on the wee pet sst and i'm 180 190 pounds i get i go from zero to 40 you know and i don't know how many seconds but it's a, pretty much it's a zero to 40 on this it's a zero to 30 now i was so hyped about this and i was thinking that this thing was going to be like crazy crazy fast i thought it was going to be a little bit bigger because you know how you see when you see something online, it, it looks different when you see it in real life. You know, you're like, oh, wow, it's a lot smaller than I thought, or oh, it's a lot wider than I thought. To me, this is a lot smaller than I thought. And, you know, so much hype on it. Even though it was hyped up, I still was going to get it. I still was going to get a Dualtron because I want one. I, I, I collect, I, I love these having these scooters, so I was going to get it anyway. But when I see it, I was like, wow, it's smaller than I thought. And then when you ride it, it's... It feels very compact on your body. It feels like it like hugs your body. It's more of a, it's not big and it's not bulky. And like I said, the takeoff is like from zero to 30. I mean, you know, if you're 150 pounds, it's gonna probably be zero to 40 or zero to 35. 
it, weight has a lot to do with it. So this is just based off of my experience. So people who are maybe 180, 185, 190, expect a zero to 30, okay? And, but it gradually creeps up to like 40 and then it'll keep going. Like the highest I got was like 45, you know, and then I just kind of capped out. One day I'm going to keep going and see, but I just <laughs> didn't want to go, didn't want to keep going fast. But uh, so zero to 30 and then it'll gradually make its way up. This thing can definitely do 50. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could do 50. It's just a slow creep. It's not really fast. On the WePad SST, you're boom, you're zero to 40, and then it's, and then maybe to like 45, it's a little fast, and then you start to creep when you get to like 50. So it's creeping up. But um, yeah, what else can I say? Um, the build quality is very nice. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head over there and let you guys see the scooter in a minute, see the aesthetics and all that stuff too. So I just want to think about what I want to say. Okay. So range, mm, okay, so fully charged, this thing is what, 84 volts, 83 volts, so that's going to get you a lot of range. Uh, you know, I got about, I'd say, 40 miles, maybe 45 miles, and that's like from me riding on a high setting and then lowering it as I go. I'm going to talk about that at the end, I'm going to let you guys know how to uh, save your battery and if you're I'm gonna I'm let you know why your scooter is cutting off before the battery is even at its true cutoff point I'll, I'll talk about that later on but range I say I got about like 40 to 45 miles and I could have gotten more you know and I'm gonna show you how to get more you know um, I finally did some research on that to figure out what was going on why am I cutting off and I and I found it um, so range, yeah, about, what else can I talk about? Um, the wheels, okay? So the wheels on this thing are amazing, okay? So you know how on all the other electric scooters, okay, you have these wheels, right? And anybody who's a scooter enthusiast who rides these kind of scooters knows that it's a pain in the ass to change the tires, okay? When you get a flat tire and you gotta change it, when you unscrew it, the wire's hanging. You got to, like, find a way to put the motor on top of something so it doesn't drop off. And, you know, you can't completely detach the wheel. And you don't want to drop the motor because it's extremely heavy. And it'll probably tear the wire. And there goes your scooter because the motor is connected to, to the, um, the wire is connected to the motor. Even when you change the tire, no matter what, you have to sit that to the side. And you may not have enough wire. It's just a pain in the ass, Okay. What's cool about the Storm is that you can completely take the wheel off, okay? So when you're doing any tire changing, well, first of all, one thing to get clear, this these tires do not tape tubes. This is a tubeless um, tired scooter. So these are tubeless tires. So you're not going to have to worry about doing any tubes, but you still can get a flat on a tubeless tire like if you run over a nail or you run something over but there's ways to patch that up there's like kits that you can like stick in the hole and pull it out and something dries and it patches the hole or something like that but uh so when you change the tire on this you're going to be changing the entire tire so which which is cool that they made it to where you can take the whole entire tire off makes it a lot easier no wires hanging nothing the wire the wheel just comes completely off and for a tube for changing a tube tire that's going to be very 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 handy because changing a tube tire is more annoying because you got to pry the whole thing off so that's my whole thing on the wheels um what else deck space the deck space is uh pretty nice actually it's a good little um size it looked a little bigger online but when i seen it in real life i was like mm, it, it seems a little bit smaller but it's big at the same time i don't know how to explain it uh it's really wide you know i like a wide deck i like a lot of room for my uh when i'm riding um the only thing is for me the way i like to ride is i like to ride with one foot right here, and then my other foot will be kind of angled like this. And then that's how I like to uh, stand on the scooter. That's how I feel comfortable. Or the other foot like this, like that. 
I'm not a fan of resting my feet on this. I know they make that like that. I wish this wasn't like this, but that's the way it is. It kind of limits your room. If this was like flat or like more room like on the Thunder and I could just lay my feet flat all the way back here, that's really comfortable for me. So if you're like me and you like that flat, uh, don't really expect that. But it doesn't take anything from the scooter. You can get used to it. It's an amazing scooter. Um, it's really fun to ride. It's, it's just when you're riding it, it, you know, it just hugs your body. It feels like you're like locked into the scooter. Like, you know, you feel like, you know, you, you got full control over it. It's very sturdy at high speeds. Very nicely, very nice build. Um, what else can I say? Oh, but the suspension. Now, the suspension are the same as the Thunder, if you're familiar with that. It has these cartridges that are actually located in here. They're like these cartridges that you can swap out and whatnot. Um, I think the standard ones come with a, a medium or something, but there's different um, firmness. Uh, uh, there is a soft, which is the one I want. I want the softest one, but I see at uh, Mini Motors USA, they're sold out, and I tried to look around for them. They're sold out everywhere, so I hope they make some more because I want the softest that I can get because these are maybe medium. And I don't know if it's firm. The suspension is okay, but you definitely feel the bumps, but it's not to the point where you're like, oh my God, this hurts so bad, but depending on how big the bumps are, you will feel it. Um, I'll tell you that right now. Um, and depending on how fast you're going, you feel them, but mm, it's tolerable, but it's not the most comfortable, but it's not too bad, you know, once you get used to it. But honestly, I want to try to find the uh, soft shocks. So like the soft cartridges, cause like on my Turbo Wheel Phaeton, it has like the big shocks inside and you know that's just bouncy and you just ride over everything no problem you don't feel anything on that so um that's what i have to say about the suspension what else can i say um oh the controller in this build the controller is right here guys so um also the battery is removable as you can see right here there is a key right there and that's where you open it and you lift up the battery. I mean, you lift, yeah, you lift the battery up and then you can connect the wire. Oh, if you guys decide to get this, just a, uh, uh, just a note, note this. When you get this, okay, and you plug it in and nothing happens, don't panic. Your scooter's not broken, okay? You're, it's gonna come with keys to the battery, open it up, okay, and plug it up because they don't have it plugged up for you. You know, I was so hyped and I was ready to plug it in and charge it and I was plugging it in and nothing was happening and I'm like, oh my God, my, my scooter doesn't work. And then I, I was like, well, it's probably not connected. So I opened it up and it wasn't connected. Connected it and it worked just fine. So, oh, and to know which way to put it in, um, if you're standing in the front this way, like this, make sure the black wire is the first wire in front of you. There's a black and a red. Make sure the black wire is in front of you, okay? That's, at least that's what I tried to pay attention to because I don't know which way to put it in. And I don't wanna try to mess up and put it in the wrong way and mess up the pins inside and then it's messed up. So uh, you with the black side facing towards you, I believe that's what I did. I hope I'm right. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, the controller is back here. Now, this thing seems pretty sturdy though. Let's give it a good look here. Um, this thing is just really hard, okay? So you got the screws. I like to dig into the scooter so people can really see it, you know? Look at all this down here. It's all like, this is all hard aluminum. This is not plastic, guys. So just so you know, this is hard really hard aluminum, okay? You hear that? As long as these bolts are tight, this thing isn't going anywhere. I haven't had any problems. I was a little skeptical about the controller being right here where I put my foot and it could bang up a lot and all that, but 
Actually, it, it doesn't. It's, it's very sturdy. It's very firm. Um, this thing is hard, guys. And they had to do that with the construction of this scooter for something new. When you open this up, all those nasty wires and all that, none of that's in there. When you, when you lift this up, it's just blank. Only thing there is is a, a battery, a cable for, to connect a battery. That's it. Okay? And this thing lights up. It shows you your battery voltage. The reason why it doesn't show, I'm going to turn it on later. Even when you turn it on, this will not light up. This only lights up when you take the battery out. There's a silver button on the bottom. And you press it. And I guess that's for external charging so that you can see your battery voltage, you know, as you're charging it externally. I thought that was really cool of them to do something like that. So, what else? Um, let's see. Uh, what else can I talk about? Um, let's see. Well, let's just go over the scooter here. So, here's the fingerprint reader that you have to get separately, okay? This does not come with it. It's like 125 bucks. When I bought my um, Cabo Mantis Pro, I know you guys remember I did a video on that. I sold that. But um, I bought this with it too. Now, I think this is a newer version of the fingerprint reader because this is a lot different. Um, it's a lot better though, because on the other one, I, I, I don't know, I, don't, I guess I'm not tripping, but I could have sworn there was a button on the side here. Either on this side, there was like a little button inside, and then there's like, you just stick something tiny in there to reset it. But look, there's nothing here now. There's nothing there. And there's nothing there. And then even on the bottom, there's nothing there. So I guess they learned from that. This is a newer fingerprint model. So, yeah, you would probably have to open this up, disconnect this, or do something in there. But, very nice touch. Um, let's see, here is the uh, throttle here. A typical uh, Mini Motors uh, throttle thing going on here. This is like the best throttle I trust. The Chinese ones that they put on the 011X and the, uh, what do you call it, the Turbo Wheel Phaeton. I don't really like those. Um, but I have to deal with it because I don't know if a Mini Motors will, one will work on my turbo wheel. So, um, but this is fine though. This is the best one, like good quality. You know, you don't have to worry about it sticking. You know, I love the Mini Motors um, throttles here. Um, if you're wondering about this tape here, I, I, I gotta take it off because I just went to the hardware store and replaced this screw because I was riding and it was out, I think this is one that holds it, but I don't think it has anything to do with this, you know, thing moving, because um, even when I took the whole thing out, it was still locked. This is what holds the handlebar in place. Um, and I actually have extra clamping. This is holding, this is the clamp that's holding the handlebar, and I have a light that's screwed tight on here, so my handlebars aren't going nowhere. Uh, but anyway, this, this had, when this screw at bolt had fallen out so I just went to like a hardware store and replaced it. I put this tape here because I was as I was writing the other bolt that looks very proprietary and it has a spacer and I saw it sticking out I was like oh crap so I stopped and put some tape on it so it wouldn't pop out as I was writing. I'm, I'm gonna rip this tape off now I don't need it because I got a bolt replacement but uh that's pretty much what's going on with this and then you guys see my lights you know, my lights, my cell phone holder. I put them on myself for me. Um, what else can I talk about? Oh, so let me show you something in the controls here, the display. Okay, so this is the display, typical mini motors, you know, thing. Just wanna show you, I wanna show you where all the magic happens here. Let's see here. P0, this is your voltage. Uh, let's see here. P8, this is, you know, the how like 100% power. You want 100%, trust me. But this is the one, oops, I wanna show you. This right here, this is where all the magic happens. 
Okay, it's on level one right now. Okay, oops. If you wait too long, it'll kick you out. You can't do anything. You gotta hold the mode button. So level one, level two, level three. Level one, level two, level three. This setting right here is where all the magic happens for this scooter. Level one, this is the lowest motor torque. Level two, this is medium motor torque. And level three, oh my goodness. This level three motor torque on this scooter is what makes this scooter stand out. When this thing is on level three, oh my goodness, this thing is burning out. Like, it's like, like you, it is so fun. Like, I have to ride on level three. Like, when I'm riding this, it has to be on level three. Like, because it's just, the burnout is just sick, dude. Like, I love it. Um, and, oh, another thing about it. When you put this P9 here on level three, okay, this is, this is actually legit, okay? Most of the reviews for these type of scooters, you know, there's a lot of Russian and French people and some people from Spanish countries and stuff doing it. There's, there's not really that many American reviewers, except for that are good. You know, I mean, they're all good, but, you know that have certain scooters that we want to see. Unless if it's uh, Old Man Dan, Scootopia, he's really good. Um, you have Yogi Steve, he, he does a lot of deliveries, but Yogi Steve is also awesome because, you know, he, he knows a lot about scooters. He's at a Dualtron Ultra and, you know, he makes good scooter videos. Um, who else? Alien Rides, uh, Wrong Way, you know, but uh, sometimes you can't get, you know, the kind of detailed reviews that you really want you know, to hear about certain type of scooters, unless if they do it or not, it's up to them. So, um, you know, I, that's why I figured I'd be, there could be a better Dualtron Storm video out there than me. I'm not, I'm not a professional, but I try to cover as much as I can to give you guys info, just give my opinion, and you guys can always ask me any questions. But, um, yeah, that's why I wanted to do it, because, you know, it's not that many people, you know, from the U.S., who, you know, have these scooters, but I, in the future, that's going to change. These electric scooters are coming up, man. You're going to see everybody on a Duotron. Oh, funny story too. I want to mention that when I was riding to work yesterday, I kid you not. I wish I could have recorded it. I saw a family on Duotrons. A whole entire family was on Duotrons. It was crazy. The little girl, okay. They had a little girl. The little girl was on a Duotron mini the mom and the dad was on Eagle Pros, Dualtron Eagle Pros. And then, you know, there was a son. I think he had a, an Eagle, not the Eagle Pro, just a Dualtron Eagle. And I was like, oh, my God, this is a family on Dualtrons. And then I passed them. I have a Dualtron Storm. And they just, just hey, what's up? Like, oh, well, you got the Storm and all that. Like, so don't get it twisted, man. These, these scooters are coming. And Dualtron is like, like you know the top dogs in this, you know, so everybody knows about Dualtron and Weeped, but uh, what else can I say? So, yeah, the burnout is insane, guys, like I said, and what else? Well, you know, that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to, the, the kickstand is really sturdy, too. It's a very sturdy kickstand. I, very, I love it a lot. Uh, let's see how, how it holds up. The Turbo Will Phaeton kickstand, when I review that one, that one is crazy. That thing seems super sturdy. You know, that's another thing. Oh, let me turn it off and show you guys the lights. Oh, let me tell you what these do. Okay, so this is upgraded, obviously, from uh, Dualtron Thunder. Okay, so let me turn it on here, actually. You guys can see this. Okay, fingerprint. Oops. Sometimes it's a pain. Now it's on, okay. So as you can see, it lights up when it's on. Pretty cool, okay. So they've changed some things around. So this is your horn right here and it's really loud. Listen to this. Woo, that's loud. <laughs> you wanna do that behind somebody, you're gonna scare the fucking shit out of them. So what I try to do is, I when I when the way I use this, and I'm on a sidewalk or something, I beep it like far away because they can hear it from back and they're like, what the hell? I don't wait until I'm like right behind them and do that, you know, that's crazy. Um, these are your blinkers right here. This actually has blinkers. Turn this on, check this out. There's a blinker going to the left, right? Putting it back to center. 
turns it off, put it this way, you got a right blinker. Pretty cool, huh? Um, let's see. This right here, this button right here, hazard lights. So you have hazard lights right there, which looks pretty dope. Um, this right here is your eco mode. This is your economy mode. What this does is it lessens your speed to conserve battery. So you'll go a lot slower when this is pressed in. When it's pressed out, you're gonna go full speed, okay? You're gonna have a full power. Um, this is the on and off button, and this would just be a, a simple on and off button if you uh, don't have the fingerprint reader. Then anybody could just turn it on and ride off with it. But when you have the fingerprint reader, you power this on, but in order to get the scooter to ride, you have to register your fingerprint. So, let's see. Let me show you the lights. Might as well. Let's turn the lights off in here and let's check out some lighting effects here. All right. Oh, it's dark. All right, let's turn the lights on here so you can see it. Bam, there you go. Here's the light aesthetics. You know what I really love about this thing? Check this out, guys. Look at that. That is sick. You guys know I'm a big fan of um, aesthetics. I love lighting and RGBs. This is cool. The reflection of Dualtron, that is so awesome. And then check this out. Yeah, the lighting's on the side here. It also comes with a remote, so keep that in mind. And you can customize the, you know, the colors and whatnot and all that. So be aware of that. I haven't tried it yet because I kind of like the rainbow effect, so but I'm gonna mess around with it later. So you have this, and you have another Dualtron reflector on the ground right here. Pretty awesome, right? Pretty awesome. Uh, there's some, there's one on each side of the forks, and then there's one on the back fork here. So, looks cool, huh? I don't know, I'm, a, I'm crazy for RGB lighting and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, I guess that's, that's it for now, guys. I just wanted to do a quick, you know, review on it. Let you guys know. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, man. And, you know, I'm happy to answer your questions. And hopefully, if you're super hyped about getting this scooter, trust me, it's worth it. You're really going to love it. You're really going to have a lot of fun with it. And, the, and, oh, another thing. The sound of the motors are amazing. Okay? They're just... They're very high pitch, and you're you're just gonna love it. Let's turn the light back on. Uh, when you're riding past somebody and they hear you, and it, it has this like loud pitch, like it just it sounds awesome. Uh, another thing I wanted to say that level three. Remember I told you P9 that level three. When that P9 is on on level three, guys. Okay, when you hit this throttle. The front wheel will fucking come up. It'll go, you'll go, I am not joking. And I am gonna get a GoPro soon and I'm gonna show you that I am not kidding you. That front wheel goes like this. At first it's a little intimidating, but when you get used to it, you just see that the, the power of the, the motor, the torque is just doing that and you learn how to control it. You know, like I was saying, from all the reviewers, I can't understand what they're saying, French and Russian, and a Spanish guy who made one. And they were doing that, and I thought that they were just doing that on purpose. Like, I thought they were like, you know, just messing around or something, but, you know, no. It really does that when you take off, so, you know, you'll learn how to lean forward with it, and it won't lift up, or it'll lift up and you won't pay it no mind. At first, when you try, you're gonna be like, holy shit, like, what the hell? So just to be aware of that, but it's not intimidating at all. It's, 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 it's fucking awesome. It's sick, dude. This, this scooter is amazing. Okay. You, you are going to love it. Okay. Um, I, I just, I wake up every morning. I can't wait to ride it. Like it's so fun to ride. And I still love my Wii pad and, and all my other scooters. Um, when I want, when I want something, this is, you know, I see what they were trying to do. They're trying to make something lightweight at the same time, 
speed, lightweight, and comfort. They were trying to do all these things in the one. Um, you know, new kind of battery removal, which other scooters have done that. But the way that this one does it is kind of unique. You know, other scooters have done battery remover, but Dualtron has done it right, in my opinion. Uh, not all this nasty wiring inside. Um, you know, just, you know, removable wheels. You know, oh, forgot to mention that. Okay, here's another reason why I got this this thing. The stem, okay guys? Remember in the Dualtron Thunder? You could get one of these, but you had to get, it doesn't come stock, you have to buy it separate. And this is like the double clamping system. This thing is solid, okay? First of all, this thing has no wobble. This thing kinda, you know, pops into place when you pull it down. This thing always pops back into place. And, it's a, and it holds this in place so that it never, saggy or anything zero stem wobble on this guys and another main main reason why i got this want to know why i got this over the thunder i didn't think twice over the thunder this as you guys remember i'm really big on safety and i've had a lot of scooters and a lot of scooters where they break and all that when i saw this new mechanism i was like okay i gotta have it you even need us, this thing is so sturdy. You even need a special tool to take this off, okay? Now there's some kind of bolts and all this other kind of stuff in there, but this is sturdy, guys. I'm telling you, it is sturdy, guys. And this is where it's at, okay? No other scooter has a stem mechanism like this. And guys, you want safety, okay? Because before, most of the scooters like this had the bolt up here, right? had the bolt under here, remember? And then they were cracking because of wobble. Well, check this out. No more bolt. Look at that. It's just a smooth layer. There's no more bolt there. Excellent. So, this is something new, something revolutionary, something that is new that actually works very well and holds very sturdy. So, just a quick video here. I gotta get ready to get up out of here, but I had to give you guys a quick review of this scooter, the Dualtron Storm. I'm gonna continue to ride it and I will give you guys more updates on it as it comes, so. Oh yeah, um, yeah, that's what I wanna, uh, that's what I also wanna talk about. So, now, for the voltage, okay. I wanna talk about, I did some research on it and I remember even I was mentioning in other videos, I think you can look this up, but I'm going to explain it in a video the best of my, to the best of my knowledge. Um, maybe this may have been happening to other people where your scooter is advertised to cut off at 50 volts, right? But it cuts off at like 54 and you still have like 35% left in your battery. And you're like, what the hell? And I remember all the time when I'd be riding and then it cuts off at like 67 volts or when I when it should be cutting off at 60 and, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, why does it do that? And I found out what it is. So you can get more range out of your battery. It's just at a certain point, you have to lower the power, okay? And you have to um, go slower because there's something that's called a uh, voltage sag, okay? And let's see if I can turn this on. So I'm at 74 volts, right? So when you, when you pull this throttle down really, really hard, something happens that's called voltage sag, meaning it says 74, but when you pull this all the way down, it's gonna go like 73, 72, uh, 71, 70, and maybe 69. So it's gonna drop down five, okay? Or sometimes maybe even six. Even though you still have 74 volts, it's going to drop like five or six down, okay? Now, when you're up high, like when you're in, when you have 78 volts, 79, or you're fully charged at 84, when you pull on the throttle, it's cool. Nothing's gonna happen, you know? It's not gonna shut off or anything because you have ex enough excess volts to be able to compensate for, you know, not shedding off. And there's a reason why it's shedding off. The reason why it's shedding off is because 
when you start getting lower, like when you start getting to like 70 volts or something or 69, now if you're, oh, and it also depends on your power settings. So if you're on the highest power settings, uh, fastest start, uh, level nine, level three on P9, uh, level three right here, level three gear, and you crank this when you're at like, I don't know, 69 or 70 volts, remember, you're gonna drop down. So the cutoff voltage for this is either 58 volts or 60 volts, right? So the reason why you're cutting off at 35% at like 67 volts, like, wait a minute, I still have a whole seven, what the hell? Is because when you press this, the voltage sag is going over, it's dropping lower, it's hitting that point. So you don't know, you're just going crazy, like boom, and then it's dropping maybe to like 58, 57, or 60. And as soon as it, it, rec it realizes and recognizes that it's hitting that, it automatically shuts itself off. Because regardless if you have the, the volts technically, it's designed to shut off when you hit that, when it sees that, when it senses that. So that's why it's cutting off. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. And I tested it today. I didn't cut off at 67 volts anymore. So you can tinker around with it you know, find, you know, your settings to get the most out of your battery so that you can get the full, you know, all the way to 60 volts if you want. And then be like, okay, you can get more, the most range out of it. And I'm gonna tell you what I did today. So I charged this thing today to full charge, okay, with my fast charger. And I charged it for eight hours. Okay, for instance, the, the, the regular charger is shit, just so you know, you need to get a fast charger. I'm gonna give you an idea. I was at 68 volts, right, uh, when I got here. I was using it all day before I went to work. I was doing deliveries. And now I'm at 74 volts, okay? Full charge is 84, so it's only 60%. That's with a regular charger. If I have my fast charger, which I don't take my fast charger with me, I just ch take the regular one to get me enough to get home. This is enough. So it would have charged it to full. And, that, and that's eight hours. So 68 volts... For eight hours on a regular charger got me to 74. That's only 60, it's not full. So just, just to give you aware of that. But yeah, so that's how it works, guys. So I'm pretty sure, you know, you could, people have looked this information up, but I've noticed some people were asking that question too. So I figured I, I wanted to throw that in there so you guys can, uh, you know, understand why that's happening, okay? So, yeah, so when you hit this throttle, so okay, so what, what I did was, okay, I start off at 84 volts, right? I crank it, I crank it, I go crazy, um, you know, whatever. I, I'm, I'm going crazy, I can do that. I have enough voltage to compensate. Once I got to 70, what I did was, I did not change this gear to level one, level two. I left that at full power. I did not change my fast start, which is like, I don't know, that's like, I don't know the P that is, but there's a fast start and there's a motor torque. Motor torque is P9, there's another fast start. I didn't change my fast start. The only thing I changed was this, okay? Let me see. P9. I put P9 to level one, okay? When I got to 70 volts, I put it at one. Okay, and when I pull on the throttle, I get a voltage sag of three, right? So I was at what? 70, 69, 68, 67, okay? I was getting to like 67, but my speed is obviously gonna be reduced. So, I um, can't remember if I was on economy or not. And oh yeah, and on economy mode too, okay? So I had economy mode, pressed in, right? And I had P9 to level one, okay? Now, I did, oh, and the, the power, the percentage, I left it at 100%. Now, the cool thing about this is, I only got like a three voltage drop. So as long as you're not hitting that 60, constantly pay attention to it and make sure you're not hitting that 60. If you're not hitting that 60, you're good. So I was dropping three, so I was like, okay, I can keep going, and it wasn't cutting off, okay? So that's the trick. So when I got to 65 volts, 
you know, another time I tried it, I was like, okay, let me, let me lower the power even more. So what I did was I put this gear to like level two, right? And then I tried to see how low I can get. I, and then I, I got to like 63 and then I was like, okay, that's enough. But I eventually ended up going to like level one. And then, you know, you just kind of got to kind of gradually get the feel of it and you'll see what you need to do and what you need to lower as you, as you do it. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I really wanted to say that because I know people were probably having issues with that. So that's how you kind of get the most out of the range of your battery. Okay. So that you're really getting it. Now, here's the thing. I heard that letting your battery get that low may degrade the battery's life cycle. Okay. So if you ride from 84 volts and then you just stop at 70, your battery is not getting so low. So it's keeping the longevity because I hear that when the bat, the lower the battery gets, the more the chemicals could possibly become, you know, more imbalanced, you know? So if you go lower than 70, you know, you risk it just degrading faster. But I'm willing to try that because I'll just buy another battery. I want to see how long it'll last. I want to get the full amount of the battery. But I won't do it all the time. I'll do it sometimes. I'll do it when I need to. If I don't, I'll just charge this to 70. But if I really need to push that rest, I'm going to lower the power and I'm going to go as low as I can. And I'm going to see what happens. So, yeah, that's how it is with that. So now you guys know how to fix that. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate your support. If you enjoy the videos, go ahead and subscribe. You know, if you don't, don't subscribe. People will subscribe if they want to subscribe. You don't, you don't tell people, hey, subscribe to my channel. They should be like, no, dude, I'll subscribe if I want to subscribe. Like, what the hell? I don't know. If, you can't make someone subscribe. They like it, they like it. I like my videos. No, I'll like your video if I like it. So, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching, though. Appreciate it, guys. But uh, also, just a tip, man, guys. Wear a helmet. At least wear a helmet. Oh, I got I got some cool looking body armor and a, and a sick helmet. I'm gonna do a review on that too. I got a body armor chest, and it's just it's like a body armor jacket, so I don't have to put elbow pads and knee pads and all that. Nah, dude. I got some motorcycle pants and I got a sick ass uh, um, armor jacket, which looks cool. You look like fucking Spider Man and shit. So uh, I'm gonna do a review on that, but. My advice to you guys is, I know we get lazy, I know you don't wanna put it on and do all that. You have to wear a helmet with these things, guys, because even if the scooter's strong and sturdy and has a good build quality, you never know. These people on the road don't care. They may pop out of nowhere, you know, because you're going faster now on the scooter, you know, so it takes time for you to stop. If you're going fast and these guys aren't looking and they just run out and hit you, and you fall off, forward on these scooters you're gonna bust your whole face you're gonna be eating through a straw if you have a full face helmet on you're you know you're most likely gonna be okay you know so if you don't want to wear the body armor you don't want to do that at least wear a helmet and i'm gonna tell you right now it's scary and i've fallen on these before you know on some of the other scooters i've had i've fallen and uh, most of the falls happen from debris on the street pay attention to the road you know, that's why I'd be paranoid to go fast sometime, not because I don't trust the scooter, but because I don't want to run something over and fall and bust my ass because I hit some, I hit like a rock or something one time and I flew off and slid and it was bad. Got the scars to prove it. So watch the ground. Okay. Watch potholes. Potholes will fuck you up, dude. Watch those potholes and watch rocks. Any kind of thing you think you can run over, don't even try it. Don't even attempt it. Because these wheels are, are not as big, you know. The Weepad SS is really wide, but these are a little bit thin. But other than that, um, hope you enjoyed the video. You know, leave a comment. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. See you then.